The Chinese Communist Party has been working to gain key infrastructure contracts and make trade in roads in America's southern backyard, Latin America. NTDE spoke with leading Congress members from the region, denouncing Beijing's actions this weekend at the Brazilian edition of CPAC. Brazilian congressmen and intellectuals shared a major concern this past weekend at the country's edition of the Conservative Political Action Conference, or CPAC, that is, the Chinese Communist Party's actions in South America. Chinese companies are just a concession from the Chinese Communist Party. So at some point, at any given time, they will serve the party. And the party is a power project, an organization that seeks power. That was Paulo Eduardo Martins. He's a leading conservative representative running for Brazil's Senate this year with the blessing of President Jair Bolsonaro. China is Brazil's largest trading partner, accounting for about one-third of its exports. The South American country has been a traditional U.S. ally since World War II. It's also one of a handful of nations in the region where Beijing has replaced Washington as the leading foreign player over the last two decades. And China's interests might extend beyond commerce, even playing a role in U.S. homeland security. Former U.S. Southern Command Chief Admiral Craig Fowler said in a congressional hearing China was looking to use infrastructure to project its own military power in our hemisphere. Here's what a Brazilian congressman had to say. We need to nurture in Brazil the idea of imposing restrictions to stop enterprises controlled by the Chinese Communist Party from getting strategic initiatives. See what's happening in Europe. We need to prepare for something very big and dangerous that might come over the world. Brazil might be at great risk with our logistics in the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. NTD also spoke with Rafael Fontana. He is the former PR director of Huawei in Brazil. The Chinese telecom giant is considered a national security threat by the U.S. Federal Communications Commission. Of course, the region is strategic from a military standpoint. With China's penetration in Latin America, the U.S. might, for the first time in its history, have a military threat next to its borders. What's more, NTD spoke with Senator Maria Fernanda Cabal from neighboring Colombia about the issue. If the United States doesn't give investment proposals to countries like Colombia, the Chinese will come with their money. The Chinese are the new colonizers of the world, of the third world. They did it to Africa already, and now practically the whole of Latin America is in China's grasp. Also on the event's guest list, the Brazilian president's son, Congressman Eduardo Bolsonaro, upon hearing about the Chinese Communist Party's religious persecution, he took a stance condemning atrocities against the peaceful meditation practice Falun Dafa, targeted in China since 1999. I'm Eduardo Bolsonaro, and I oppose the Chinese Communist Party's persecution of Falun Dafa. Javier Milei, a representative and presidential candidate from Argentina, added, Before I got elected, I said I wouldn't trade with assassin regimes. I'll never push for relations with China while China remains communist and doesn't respect its citizens' freedoms. Brazil is an agricultural powerhouse. It is among the top five producers of food in the world and is number one in soybean crops. With reduced exports from Russia and Ukraine amid the war, China has been increasing business dealings and its influence in the country. In Brazil, too many people linked to agribusiness don't notice that China is making inroads in that industry. An industry it needs. It needs food. And bit by bit they are infiltrating the food business to, at some point, strike it from within. Too many people are misled, thinking all that matters is money. Many times you can get money, but you'll lose your freedom. And after that, you might lose that money anyway, as we've seen happening when dealing with the Chinese.